Welcome back to the Zoomer. It's now time for final thoughts from our panelists, starting to my left. I'm a big fan of Google Flight Alerts when I'm buying uh, a plane ticket. And I plug in where I'm going and what the dates are, and then every few days I get an email that says that the price is going up or down. And, and one day will come when the price is just perfect, and then I hit uh, oh. click on it. And there's also SkyTracker does a similar service like that, mm -hmm. and that has saved me hundreds and hundreds of dollars just by like giving myself that little break. That's a very good tip. And in terms of like timing for buying flights, it, I'm so I have a rule about 55 days in advance, unless you're uh, booking domestically, and then it's kind of a four to five weeks. And my other tip, really, to leave you with is shoulder season. Yes. Yeah. Tra don't travel in the, the the high season. It's just no fun. Joanne. Okay, so when it comes to traveling with a disability, when there's a will and there's a way, it is amazing how travel has opened up for people with disabilities, whether it's the Galapagos or African safaris. It's amazing. So research, research, there's great tours out there, and they have amazing equipment to help you get out and do safaris. But I would say if you're new to the disabled world or you're a boomer and maybe you've got some mobility impairments and you're a bit nervous about traveling for the first time, look for countries that have strong accessibility laws like the America, American Disability Act. It's been around for about 30 years. When you land in the USA, it's freedom. It's so easy with a disability. And also look for any countries around the world that have hosted Paralympic Games because they have gone above and beyond to make it mobility um, friendly, but also people with um, visual impairments, hearing impairments, it's so easy. So cities like Sydney, um, Barcelona, the UK, so accessible. And you wouldn't really think they would be, but Paralympic Games cities are incredible. So those, those are my tips. Michelle. Well, as you know, I like to pack less. So I always recommend don't bring too much stuff. Um, you don't want to deal with it when you're going around your destination because um, it will be difficult if you've got to hop on a train or public transit. Uh, always pack less. Another side tip is um, I like to get excited for my trip and, you know, obviously do some research. So I like to watch vloggers and be very spe specific with what type of video I want to see. If I want to know the insider stuff of a certain destination that I'm going to, I'll just search that up and I'll find all these tips that you would not normally find in a book. You can find it on a video and you can just watch and enjoy. Catherine. I uh, have a couple of tips. One would be use a travel professional if you can. Uh, they will help guide you and, and make the right decision. Book your trip, book your travel insurance. No one expects an emergency or unforeseen event, so protect yourself, your family, and your finances. Natalie. Oh my goodness. How do I follow all of that? Every, everything that everyone said. In addition, you know, like I say, the airline app is key every single time you fly. Research, 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 you know. Um, and if you are flying with um, the rest of your family, you know, the, their grandkids and kids, you know, just make sure that you've researched um, around them as well because you're gonna have three different generations looking for different activities, are gonna have different needs. So, you know, research is, is gonna be great there too. Okay. We hope today's information has prepared you so your next vacation is fun and stress-free. Thank you for being with us. To get in touch, send us an email at comments at thezoomer.com. Thank you to my panel and thank you at home, the audience, for watching. We'll see you soon. It's time to zoom out.